One, two.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the family of the late Randolph Brooks and the management and staff of Lion Mega Funeral Home, at this time we'll acknowledge final viewing. All persons with mobile devices, please ensure such devices on silent or vibrate for the duration of the service. Thank you for your cooperation.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you because in moments like these, we can lift our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. We pray this morning that you would bless those whose hearts are grieving because of the loss of a loved one. And we pray, gracious God, that you would bless this service so that hearts will be encouraged, blessed, and inspired. And at the end of it all, your name will be given the praise and the glory for your mercies which you will extend to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing our first hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in blood. This is my story. This is my song. Present my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight. Nations of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. All is at rest. My Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. 
Amen to that. Thank you for your good singing. Let's continue to sing as we refer to the next well-known hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. size and height. Quincy, his nephew, recalled that at one time as a child playing mass with the power stars, the queen of the band was hooked by a car. People tried to get the driver's attention, but Uncle Spanky put Quincy in a corner, said, don't move, of course, with his deep, loud voice. He got the driver's attention by banging and he knew how big he was. So of course it dented the man's car. The man was serious about his carnival. In Trinidad, he worked as a car detailer, flushing the underbody of cars. Many people lined up, lined up their cars for the service because he was the man to get the job done right and they could guarantee a good service. Uncle Spanky raised Sharon and Randy, the children of his partner, Janet, at that time in Trinidad. He also assisted with the raising of his nieces and nephews. His niece, Yolan, recalled, at times he gave her transportation money to attend evening classes or lessons. To all his nieces and nephews, he was like a giant with a loud voice, which scared us. Spanky, or Trini's, voice complimented his size. His sister would often say his mouth was so big, you would hear him before seeing him. And that was his little sister, Bernice. He did not hold water in his mouth to give you the length of his tongue in a profane way. His volume was part of his persona for all who knew him. Besides being the blessed, best flagman Trinidad had, he enjoyed refereeing and playing football. His brother Denzel said that they always butt heads because he would tell him he could only referee, he can't play football. And an argument would immediately begin. His sister Bernadine said he was greedy and would always eat out Yolan's baby body. Like him, she did not hesitate to give him the length of her tongue and would also deal with him profanely. So you could just imagine that whole conversation. As a young man, he also loved playing the Iron for Tech Power Stars. So he got his, another nickname called Nunooks because of the melodic, rhythmic sound of the iron he was beating, which complemented the sound of the steel pan. He liked his food, enjoyed eating like a king, and often had steak, pork, or fish as part of his meals. He preferred buying his own food because he said no one could have bought what he wanted. When he moved to St. Kitts over 30 years ago, he was referred to as Trini and ran a business he inherited from his father. He rarely returned to Trinidad, but his nieces and nephews recalled him sending soul fish for his mother with money wrapped in a newspaper. His current, and not pigtail, so soul fish and pigtail. His charisma could not be hidden as many people in Sinkets knew him and built a rapport with him. Two of those people were Eric Williams, who assisted and supported 
Uncle Spanky or Trini until the days leading up to his passing. The other is Asim Adams, who has been around him since he was a young boy. He assisted him around his home. Both helped him, especially when he became immobile. The unconditional brotherly love you showed Trini will not be forgotten, and your blessing will surely come. Amen. Thank you. Uncle Spanky, Trini, sadly, we must meet you under these circumstances. You strove to live alone, to talk and walk around, but as the illness was relentless, you were forced to give up ground. God saw you getting tired, so he wrapped his arms around you and he set you down to rest. Now that you are sleeping so peaceful and free from pain, you now have a gift of peace, of peace of mind and heart. The peace he gives you is a gift no one can provide. You will always be in our hearts. May your soul continue to rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much for sharing those thoughts with us this morning. Let's stand now as we do one more hymn. I heard an old, old story. Our Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about this groaning of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and Savior 
then you may be seated. For a few moments this morning, I'd like to draw your attention to a text which is found in St. John's chapter 11 and verse 28. This morning, we all assembled here to pay our final respects to someone whom we all knew and loved. Loved as a sibling, loved as a friend, loved as a neighbor, loved as a relative, someone whom we knew and whom we all loved. But who departed this life on November the 12th? To all his family members, I want to offer you my condolences and it is my prayer that God will give you the grace you need at this particular time to go through your period of bereavement and to pick up the pieces at the appropriate time and move on with your lives there are those of us who will be praying for you and you can be assured that this God of comfort is going to bless you, not only with his comfort, but with the strength you need to face the challenges that lie ahead. Having said that, I resort now to the passage which was mentioned, St. John's chapter 11, verse 28. And in so doing, there are four words in this text which I would like to draw to your attention. The four words are, the master is come. The master is come. The master is come. The master is come. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were three siblings that lived in Bethany. Nothing is said about their parents. Chances are their parents may have been deceased. It so happened that their brother Lazarus fell ill. He fell ill. And having fallen ill, knowing that Jesus was their friend, knowing that Jesus loved Mary, loved Martha, loved Lazarus. They sent a message to Jesus. And in that message, all that they said was, He whom thou lovest is sick. They didn't mention his name. There was such a good relationship between Jesus and Lazarus. And the sisters knew about it. So they said to Jesus, He whom thou lovest, your friend, your buddy, your partner, Lazarus, is sick. That was all they said to Jesus in that message. And I suppose that Mary and Martha sat there in that house with great expectation, expecting Jesus to either stay where he was and speak a word to bring about the healing for Lazarus, or he would have returned to lay his hands on Lazarus, pray for him, and bring about his healing. But my friends, Jesus did nothing like that. He did not even send them an email, a WhatsApp, or a text to say, I'm delayed. He said nothing. Four days passed, and then Jesus turned up in Bethany. Martha and Mary were in the house. And when word was given that Jesus was in the area, as we heard from the passage that was read this morning, Martha left Mary, her sister, in the house. 
And she went and she found Jesus where he was. And in that conversation, you can tell that Martha was disappointed. Disappointed because Jesus had not turned up. He was their friend. They were in need. And their friend Jesus did not turn up. And you can, you can get that note, that sound of disappointment as she said to Jesus, If you had been here, our brother would not have died. If you had only responded when we sent the message, if you had only turned up, if you had only come when we sent that message to you, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And in that brief conversation which Martha had with Jesus, he said to her, your brother will rise again. No argument, no disagreement. I can understand your disappointment. But Martha, your brother will rise again. And after that brief conversation which she had with Jesus, she left the master. She headed for the house. She found her sister Mary and said to her, The master is come. Are you with me still? The master is come. The master is come. No, he did not turn up at the time when they wanted him to turn up. But we've got to remind ourselves that this God whom we serve is a sovereign God. And God does things according to his will, according to his purpose. It was his will to be present at Bethany, but not at the time which Martha and Mary requested. It was on his time. And when the time was right, when the appointed time had come, Jesus showed up. Amen. Amen. And she said to her sister, the master is come. The master is come. The master is come. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to leave with you three very significant things which the master did when he arrived in Bethany that day. First of all, he allayed the fears of Mary and Martha. He allayed the fears of Mary and Martha. There are those things in life which cause us to be fearful. Danger, sickness, the uncertainties of life, death, trouble. There are those things in life, ladies and gentlemen, which cause us to become fearful. Perhaps Lazarus was the breadwinner in the family. He paid the bills. He provided the groceries. He paid the rent or the mortgage. He protected his sisters. But now he was no longer there. He was dead. Those sisters were filled with anxiety, filled with fear, filled with sadness. Their brother was dead. But as dead as he was, as rotten as he was, the master showed up. Amen. Amen. The master showed up. And when he showed up, he allayed the fears of Mary and Martha when he said to them, Your brother will rise again. Amen. This morning, I want to remind you that this God of Abraham, this God of Isaac, this God of Jacob, whom we serve, delights in allaying our fears. The psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil, for thou art with me. This God whom we serve, he has a way of 
a laying off heirs in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 we read, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. At a time when Joseph was confused and troubled in his mind, over the pregnancy of Mary, his wife, knowing that they had not been intimate and she was now pregnant, he was planning to get rid of Mary secretly. And while he was planning to do that, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Fear thou not, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. The point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, is that this God whom we serve, he knows when we are fearful. He knows when we are troubled. He knows when we are anxious. He knows when we are sad. He knows. And he doesn't just stay away in a corner and look at us, but he has his own unique ways of showing up. Amen. Amen. And allaying our fears. He did this for Mary. He did this for Martha. He'll do this for you and me. The second thing which Jesus did when he showed up that day was that he assured them all will be well. Amen. He assured them all will be, will be well. In our times of sickness, in our times of bereavement, in our times of failure, in our times of loss, in our times of sorrow, it is always a blessing to hear a voice that speaks words of comfort, words of assurance. One of our men just came back from overseas where he went to have surgery. And he said to me that when he arrived at the facilities, the facility, I beg your pardon, the morning for the, for the surgery. The medical staff, one by one, they took the time to talk to him about the procedure. They took the time to explain to him what would take place. And Tom did his part. When Tom was finished, he was referred to Mary. When Mary was finished, he was referred to Janet. When Janet was finished, he was referred to Harry. And he said to me, by the time those people were through talking to him, he was ready for the surgery. Because the manner in which they spoke to him, the way in which they spoke to him, their words were so assuring their words were so calming. Their words were so comforting that even though he didn't want to take the surgery, he said, I was ready for the surgery. The point I'm trying to make is that there are times when we are troubled and fearful and bereaved. And during those times, it's a blessing to hear a voice that calms us with the words they speak, that assures us with the words they speak. This was what Jesus did. Mary and Martha were troubled, bereaved, sad, disappointed, brokenhearted. But Jesus showed up and he spoke to them by saying, your brother, blessed be God, will rise again. Your brother will rise again. All will be well. All will be well, Martha. All will be well, Mary. This is what Jesus did. And even in our time, when he shows up, he assures us. In our times of bereavement, in our times of sickness, in our times of failure, loss, etc. He assures us all will be well. The final thing I want to leave with you is that when Jesus showed up 
Remember, Martha said to Mary, the master is come. And when he arrived in Bethany, he allayed the fears of the sisters. He assured them that all will be well. And he addressed their situation. I like that. He addressed their situation. <laughs> what did Jesus do? He addressed the situation by saying to those bereaved sisters, I am the resurrection and the life. He addressed their situation by saying to them, show me where you have buried him. He addressed their situation by saying to Lazarus, come forth. Scripture shows us that he stood before the grave of Lazarus. And with a loud voice, he cried, Lazarus, come forth. And the next thing you know, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, is that Lazarus came forth. He was alive. He was resurrected. He came forth. When Lazarus came forth, Jesus said, Loose him, because he was bound in the same clothes in which they buried him. Jesus addressed their situation by restoring their brother to them. That's the kind of God we serve. Whenever he shows up, he addresses situations. When the disciples were experiencing difficulty on the Sea of Galilee in that storm, when they couldn't manage the situation for themselves, they went to Jesus, they awoke him, and they said, carest thou not that we perish? And just like that, Jesus got up and spoke to the wind and to the sea and said, peace, be still. He addressed their situation at the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. When they had no wine, it was an embarrassing situation. And had that happened in St. Kitts, it would have been on voices. <laughs> Mr. Gomes. <laughs> Mary, the mother of Jesus, knowing what was happening, very quickly she ran to him and said, they have no wine. Jesus addressed the situation by saying to the servants, fill the water pots with water. They were filled with water. He said, draw out now. And they began to draw out. Good stuff. <laughs> Wine, ladies and gentlemen. As I close, I say to you this morning that as you go through life, as you face your challenges, as you face your difficulties, do like Martha and Mary. Contact Jesus. He's going to show up. And he's going to address your situation. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for the moments which we have spent here. Being reminded of your goodness. And so we pray that in the days that lie ahead and even as we go forth, we will turn to you like Mary and Martha did and get the help that comes from you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I'd like all the family members to stand at this time, please, so that we can pray for you, all the family members. Let us pray. Father in heaven, this morning, we turn to you at this time as we bring before you these loved ones who are mourning the loss of a loved one. 
these relatives, these family members. Only you can understand the thoughts that are going through their minds. Only you can understand the emotions. Only you can understand how they feel. And I bless you this morning because you cannot only understand, but you can help them. And so we lift our eyes to the hills this morning from whence cometh our help. And we're asking for you to help them. You have said in your word that you are our refuge and strength and our very present help in time of trouble. Now, Lord God, be their help. Be their help this morning. And in the days that lie ahead, be their help. Be their strength. Be their source of comfort. Yes, we pray your blessings on them. And in moments when their hearts get sad and a tear begins to fall, we pray that you'll help them to understand that you're going to address their situation and take care of them. Thank you for the grace which you will give to all of them, we pray, Father, so that they can make it through life and make it through life in such a manner that when they stand before you on that great and notable day, they will hear you say to them, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. We commit them all into your hands, Master. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn, My Jesus, I love thee. Shall we all stand? My Jesus, I love thee.
Gila. 